There. All right. We're all set up. Oh, I got to turn lights off. Hello, everybody in internet land. So. So we're ready to go. So ocean water chemistry. And we're going to start off today kind of um, a little chemistry review. I promise it won't be too hard. You don't have to balance equations. You're right. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to oh, look, there's a big puddle right there. I put this laser pointer in. Yeah, you're right. Oh, look at this little buddy down here already. There we go. That's a good day. Okay, so um, just really quick. Hopefully, this is review for you all. I hope you've seen all this stuff before. There's these things called atoms. You know about those, right? Atoms, okay. And then the atom, you know, has a nucleus, right? So the nucleus is where all of the mass is concentrated, and it's also where the two subatomic particles. You you know what subatomic particles are in the nucleus, right? Which subatomic particles are in the nucleus? Anybody remember that? Let me let me open to see what I'm asking you here. What are we on? Number 14? 13, 14. Here we go. Okay. Oh, this starts with some kind of um oh, we kind of skip these first two ones, don't we? That's okay. You know, I think that I, um, that's okay. We kind of start with number, we kind of start with number three. We'll get to number one and two um, later, okay? So we kind of start with number three. You see what I'm talking about, right? Okay. So um, three basic subatomic particles are electrons, neutrons, and what's the other one? Protons, right? And what's the charge on each? So what's the charge on the electron? Yeah, negative, right? And the protons are pro positive, and neutrons are neutral, right? So the protons are in the are in the nucleus, neutrons are in the nucleus, the electrons orbit around those the, around the nucleus, right? And the electrons are the things that are involved in the in the actual bonding of different of different elements, right? So different chemical bonds. So the electrons are the things that are being transferred, okay? So the way that all these electrons, they actually, um, they actually arrange themselves in particular orbits that we call shells. Okay, so the shells correspond to different energy states of the electrons. Okay, now the first shell can only hold two electrons. So the first shell can only hold two electrons. Now here's a question for you. The electrons have a negative charge. The protons in the nucleus have a positive charge. So what keeps the electrons from just zoozing off into space? And just going flying off. Why do they stay close to the nucleus? Why do they orbit? Why don't they just go go whizzing off wherever they want? Like what keeps them what keeps them attached to the nucleus? Yeah, it's the electrical charge, right? You know, you ever see like electrostatic? Electricity, right? Static electricity, right? It's it's a it's a negative positive attraction. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the force that keeps the electrons grounded and attached to the nucleus. Okay, so it's an electrostatic charge. Okay, so you get two electrons in the first orbital shell, then you can get up to eight electrons in 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 the uh, other shells that progressively surround it. Okay, now things get more complicated that, than that. You can have shells with ten and fourteen. We don't talk about, I'm not going to talk about that in this class because that's getting too complicated. But for the purposes of this class, let's just say we have two in the first shell. That's the, that's the total maximum number it can hold. And then in subsequent shells, you have eight. Okay? That's kind of, it's, it's a simplification of reality, but it's a pretty useful simplification for this class. Okay? 
So, so that's, that's how they work. Now, the thing about atoms is they are most stable when their outermost shell is full. They are most stable when their outermost shell is full. So let's take a look at carbon for an example. Okay, I'm going to show you carbon. So carbon is element number, do you all see, there's the periodic table entry for carbons, okay? So, the, so for carbon, what's the atomic number? Does anybody remember how to read one of these periodic, periodic table entries? So what's the element, the atomic number for carbon? Six. Six, that's right, it's six, okay? That corresponds to the number of protons, right? So the atomic number is the number of protons. So we have six protons. So you can see the blue shows the protons, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there's carbon. Okay, so the nucleus. Now um, you see the electrons, okay? A stable neutral element is going to have the same number of electrons as protons, okay? Some num same number of electrons as protons, so that it's electrically neutral doesn't carry a net charge. Because what happens if you had more electrons than protons? It would be more negatively charged, right? If you had more protons than, than electrons, then it would be more positively charged, okay? But in its natural state, elements are usually just neutral, and they, they have the same number of electrons as, as protons, okay? So we have two in the first shell. So that's going to leave us with four more Right, four more electrons, okay? So is this outermost shell of carbon full? No, no right? Because it, it wants to have eight in that outermost shell, right? So it wants to have eight, but only has four. So it's not full, so it's not happy. So it's going to do things to make itself happy. So what's it gonna do? It's gonna bond, okay? So that's, that's what drives all of elemental bonding, you know, all the bonding among atoms, why do they do it? Well, they're doing it so that they can get this magical, you know, full, complete outermost shell. That's what they're after. That's what makes atoms stable and happy, okay? So let's take a look at some more elements just to kind of, just to kind of show you how things work. Here's oxygen. Oxygen is element number eight. That means it has eight protons. It's going to have eight electrons in its stable neutral state, okay? Two, two electrons in the first shell, and it's gonna have six electrons in the outermost shell. Is it happy? Yes. Six in the outermost shell. No. No, because no, it wants eight, right? It wants to have eight. It's a drain. It's making creepy noises. Okay, so you have to draw out, see number eight says draw out the electron configuration of oxygen, okay? So you can draw this, you could just draw this simple diagram, right? Showing that you have two in the, in the innermost shell, that innermost shell is full, but the outermost shell is the one that matters, okay? So the one that's trying to get maximum of eight. That'll make it full. So what would make oxygen so happy? What is it, what is it striving for and trying to do? It's trying to get two, it's trying to get two more electrons, right? So oxygen is what we call, it's one of the primary electron receptors, okay? It's looking to receive two electrons. Very common element in Earth, right? Do you all remember, like, we looked at, like, the primary elements that were in Earth? Actually, we should, um, we should talk about that, number two, right? Do you, this is actually something we talked about a long time ago in this class. You know, it's, it's talking about the elements most common in the continental crust. Do you remember some of the elements that are very common in the continental crust? Oxygen. Oxygen is one of them. And iron, did I hear iron? Okay, iron's one of them. There was also silicon and aluminum, okay? So there's some of the most common. So oxygen is a very important element. That's why I have you draw out this electron configuration of oxygen. Okay. So oxygen wants two, two electrons to make it full and complete and happy. Okay. Look at chlorine. 
fluorine has 17 electrons, right? It's element number 17. So it has two in the first shell. It has eight in the next shell. That brings it to 10. That leaves seven in the outermost shell. Is it happy? No. No, it's not happy, right? Everybody see that? So how many electrons does it want? It needs one more. It needs one more, right? Okay, it needs one more. Because look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it wants one more to make eight, to be full. Okay, and then it's happy. So chlorine is always, and it, is chlorine, you think, is there a lot of chlorine in the ocean? What's the sea salt made of? Salt. Salt. What's salt made of? Bree, Bree do, you, do you know the answer? Is there a lot? She's, I don't know. She's nodding her head. Kind of, yeah. There's a lot of chlorine because, remember, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride, right? Salt. So there's a lot of, that's why I put this guy up here because there's a lot of chlorine too. Okay. So, so, so sodium chloride. So there's a lot of chlorine in the oceans. I know it sounds kind of weird to say that there's a lot of chlorine in the ocean, but there is, right? There's a lot of because there's a lot of salt in the ocean. Okay. Now also look at argon. Here's another example. Okay. Argon's element number 18, right? So it's the one after chlorine. So you have chlorine, then you have argon. Now argon is going to have how many in its outermost shell? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is it happy? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. And we call argon. Does anybody know the name of those special gases? At, at the end of the periodic table, but noble the noble gases, yeah, so those are the noble gases. So we call all these guys, oh, this is getting cut off, that's kind of weird. Um, we call all these guys over here, that's helium, it's cut off for, oh, wait, it's doing that, it's kind of weird. Go like this. There. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, um, those are all the noble gases, okay? And they don't react. They don't react. And they don't react because they're happy the way they are, right? Everybody else is unhappy with themselves, but, but the noble gases are happy the way they are. So they don't need anybody. But everybody else, everybody else wants to bond with someone else because they need to trade the electrons so that they can become happy. Okay. So... Um, Noble gases, they're all in this column. This is, by the way, this is why we set up the periodic table the way we do, because everything in the columns, they're all kind of chemically similar, because they all have kind of similar electron configurations. They have like the same number of electrons in their outermost shell. So that's why we set up the, elect the periodic table that we, the way that we do, because like all these noble gases, they all kind of behave chemically the same. Okay, they're all inert, they don't really react, okay? Um, So uh, we talked about number nine, right? We did number nine. So, so why are noble gases chemically inert? Yeah, outer shell is full, right? They have enough electrons there, outer shell. Okay, how many electrons does chlorine need to become stable? One, that's right. How many oxygen need? Two. Two, that's right. So all these guys, so that's, that's, that's the uh, noble gases, right? So they're all happy, and they all kind of chemically, they, be, they behave the same. Everybody in this row behaves the same. Everybody in this row, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, um, they all kind of behave the same. They're all, they're all very reactive, and they all want to get one electron. So they all want to, they desperate, desperate to receive one electron. Absolutely desperate. These are such um, reactive gases. So fluorine, did I tell you my fluorine joke? Did, did Bree, did I, you remember this from last? I think so. Okay. This is a real thing that really happened to me. My last semester, my wife came to me and said, um, we need new fluorine in the, in, the, in the kitchen. And I was like, I didn't even know we had fluorine in the kitchen. It was a, she was, nobody gets this. <laughs> uh, but really, my brain was thinking, I really thought she was talking about element number nine. I really did. I, I was thinking she, she wanted fluorine for the kitchen, but she just wanted saltillo tile or something. But they, anyway, I gave her the credit card number. And, but anyway, so they're fluorine, very, very reactive. Actually, it will, if you put, um, it will, this is actually one of the few things that will react with glass. It's so reactive, it'll tear glass apart.
apart. It will react with glass and eat it away. It's kind of crazy. So it's fluorine and then um, chlorine, bromine. And then, uh, and then this row, that has the oxygen in it, okay? So those want two electrons, okay? So everything in that row wants two, or that column wants two electrons, okay? So this row, this, sorry, I keep calling it rows. This column is happy, the noble gases. This column, the halogens, they're called the halogens, they are very reactive, they want one electron. This, this column is pretty reactive too. Oxygen is, but it's kind of crazy that there's so much free oxygen in the, in the atmosphere because it's a very reactive gas, actually. I mean, you see how it is, right? Things combust, right? You know, it's because oxygen is so reactive. So, so oxygen is actually a pretty reactive gas. It wants two electrons, okay? Now, I'm going to skip all this stuff in the middle because it's very, very complicated and it involves things that, like, you know, like 10, 14, you know, orbitals that hold 10 or 14 electrons, and I don't want to get into complications. And you know what? There's not much, um, really, there's like not much vanadium in the ocean, or chromium, or, or nickel, or copper, zinc, so that's why I could just skip them. There's a lot of iron, and it gets kind of complicated with iron. I'm not going to talk about iron, but I'm going to skip over here to this column and this column, because there is a lot of sodium, right? Sodium chloride, salt in the ocean. There's a lot of potassium, K. By the way, potassium is K, okay? What is P? Does anybody know the elemental symbol P? What does P stand for? Um, Phosphorus. Phosphorus, that's right, okay? So make sure you don't get those confused, right? Because K shows up, it's potassium, it's not, right? And the P, if the P shows up, it's phosphorus. So make sure you don't get those confused. Okay, and then there's also a lot of magnesium and calcium in the ocean. A lot of calcium. Okay, so we want to talk about these. So now these guys over here on this side, they have the opposite problem. They have one too many electrons. So these guys want to get rid of sodium, potassium. They want to get rid of electrons. They want to give away one. These guys over here, magnesium, calcium, beryllium. There's very little beryllium on Earth. So you don't have to worry about beryllium but magnesium and calcium, they want to get rid of two electrons. They want to get rid of them, okay? So do you think that calcium or magnesium and oxygen would like to get together? Because these guys want to get rid of two electrons. Oxygen wants to get, receive two electrons. Yeah, they're gonna to want to get together big time. And they do, big time. What happens to the extra one, though? Because they only want one. Well, magnesium and calcium, they want to have, they want to get rid of two electrons. Right. Oxygen wants to receive two, so they perfectly match. Yeah. But, you know, um, take, for example, sodium. Sodium wants to get rid of one. Oh. But sodium will react with oxygen, and it'll just be shared by two sodiums. So you just have two sodiums, one oxygen, and everyone's happy. So everything balances out that way, okay? And that's where all that, you know, chemistry, equation, balancing the equations, that's where all that stuff comes from. Okay. So, how many electrons do sodium and potassium, Na and K, take to become stable? Number 12. Just, just one. They want to get rid of one, right? That's really worded in a terrible way. I have to fix that. Because it makes it sound like they receive electrons, and they don't. They give away. Sorry. Okay, and then what about calcium magnesium? What do they want to do? They want to get rid of two. All right, now what happens when elements or atoms give, give up or take electrons? Okay, that's called ionization. It's called ionization. It is when an atom either gives or receives, gives or receives an electron, and it takes on a net charge. It takes on a net charge. Wow, this is almost gone already, right? You can see a little bit, but this one is holding strong. Yeah, so ionization is when an atom either gives or receives an electron, 
and it, it takes on a net charge. Okay, so take sodium and, you know, sodium is going to, yeah, net charge. So, so here's the electron configuration of sodium, okay? It has the first shell with two, has the second shell with eight, that brings it to ten. Then it has the third shell with only one lonely electron, that it is desperate to get rid of that electron. It's not stable. Chlorine, on the other hand, remember it has seven in that outermost third shell. It wants to receive that electron. So these guys, are want to, they're going to want to get together big time, and they do, right? Sodium chloride, salt, that's what's in the ocean. Okay, so they form, they form, uh, so, so when you either give or receive an electron, that's called ionization, and they form ions. And when they get together, that kind of bond is called an ionic bond. So ion, the you know, next question, what are ions? Ions are just elements that have a net charge. They've been ionized, They've gone through ionization. They have a net charge. They're either positive or they're negative. Okay, so sodium has that extra electron. Chlorine is missing electron. Sodium takes on a net charge. What is that process called? Chlorine takes on a net charge. It becomes negative, right? Because it stole that electron away. It takes on an extra negative charge. So now it's negative. This guy's now positive because he lost an electron. There's an imbalance between the protons and the electrons. So what's that process called? Yeah. Or ionic bonding, ion ionization, and ionic bonding. Either one would have been fine. Okay. So these are these are ions. Okay, do you see how these are not ions and these are ions? Does that make sense? Those are not ions. Those are ions. And they are ions because you see how that positive and there's that negative there? Okay, that means that it took on a charge, it took on a net charge. Okay, so, so does all that make sense? Okay, so they're bonded together now through an ionic bond. It's an electrostatic bond because the positives and the negatives attract each other, right? So the negative chlorine atom is going to be attracted to the positive sodium ion. I shouldn't call it an atom. I should say the negative chlorine ion is attracted to the positive sodium ion. So electrostatic charge. It's the same thing with if you ever rubbed a latex balloon on your hair or on kitty's hair, or you can rub it on the wall too, just, you know, not this, but if you have latex paint on your wall, so a lot of people do, you rub it on the wall, it'll stick to the wall too. You can try it out. It only works if you have latex paint. Okay, so this is how sodium and chlorine met and bonded together. <laughs> So sodium, he's unhappy because he has one too many electrons, right? Chlorine is also unhappy because chlorine's missing that little hole right there and wants that extra electron. So sodium's going to give up that electron. Then what's what happened? What's that process called? It gave up the electron? Ionization, right? So now sodium is an ion. It has a net positive charge. Okay. And then that little electron's going to fill into that gap, and then they're going to be bonded together. And it's, and it's very, very hard to break them apart again. Very hard. You have to melt it and run, run a, a, about four volts of electricity through it to separate them again. That's how they make sodium metal. It's true. You have to get salt really hot to melt it. It has to be like 800 degrees Celsius. Anyway, sorry. Um, so sodium, it's an ion because it has a positive charge? Once it takes on a net charge, it's, yeah, it's an ion. There we go. So um, if it has a positive, positive charge, you call it a cation. If it has a negative charge, you call it an ion. Okay. 
right? Yeah, and then if it has a neutral charge, you just call it an atom. It's not an ion at all. Okay. Which happens. I mean, argon is, you know, that's neutral. Oh, because it doesn't mean anything, so it's yeah. And then um, we don't, I don't, you know, there's covalent bonds too that, that's, you know, they don't really take on, they don't ionize during a covalent bond as well. Okay. So, um, do I have you? Okay. Okay, so uh, water's a polar molecule. It's very good at dissolving ionic bonds. Remember we talked about all this, right? So water's a polar molecule, very good at dissolving ionic bonds. We talked about all that before. Okay, so rocks, minerals are mostly made, the rocks and the minerals are mostly made out of ionic bonds. They're, they're, all the atoms are stuck together through ionic bonds. So water's very good at dissolving that, right? So you can see how water's been dissolving and eating away at this rock. So what elements are in the earth? We already talked about that. That was number two, right? There's uh, mostly, there's these are like the top 11, but the uh, top four were silicon, oxygen, iron, and, and uh, silicon, oxygen, and aluminum. Okay. So atoms within a water molecule are bonded together with Actually, instead of ionic bonds, they have covalent bonds, right? And remember we talked about covalent bonding in the last lecture? Actually, it was last, the week before spring break. So remember how they're bonded together through covalent bonds? And the covalent bonds are, um, are the sharing of electrons. Do you all remember that stuff? Okay, so it's a little different than ionic bonding. So number 17, gosh, I hope you don't miss that on the test. It's a polar molecule. So water's, are, water's a polar molecule. And remember how I talked about there's like a lot of kind of freaky, strange properties of water. That's all because of polar molecule. It's the fact it's a polar molecule and it forms those hydrogen bonds. Okay, so that's the answer to number 18 is different water, water molecules. How do they stick together? They stick together with hydrogen bonds. Okay, do you all remember hydrogen bonds? Does that sound... You remember that from before spring break, hydrogen bonding? Remember that? That's very important because that's like explains a lot of these strange properties that water has. Can anybody name, or does anybody remember like some of the kind of strange properties about water? Things that are kind of unusual about water, that things it can do that are unusual. It expands when it freezes. It expands when it freezes. Very good. That's true. It can dissolve stuff. It's very good at dissolving stuff. You know, oil doesn't do that. Like oil doesn't dissolve rocks and minerals and stuff like that, right? Actually, oil. Sometimes you use oil as like a preservative, right? To preserve things from from water. You know, waterproof it so it doesn't doesn't get damaged. Anything else? Anybody remember? There's some other weird thing. What's that? Oh, its shape is kind of weird, right? Because it has that angle, the 109 degree angle, instead of being like a straight molecule. That's true. That's, that's, yeah. And also, do you remember how it has a high specific gravity? Does anybody remember that? Or specific gravity. High specific heat, high heat capacity. Do you remember that, all that stuff? Remember how we talked about microwaving water? It takes forever to like microwave your water to like make tea, you know? High heat capacity. It has a very high heat capacity. So it takes a lot of energy to raise the temperature of water. And it all has to do with water's, the hydrogen bonding, the fact that water is a polar molecule. Remember the high surface tension. Water has a very high surface tension. That's why little bugs can walk on the surface of the water. There's a lot of stuff like that. All goes back to its fact it has high, high um, polarity in its molecule. Okay. All right, so that's your little chemistry review. I hope that wasn't too painful. You learned this stuff in high school, right? Kind of, yes? Yeah. Do they, make, do they make you balance it? Do you learn how to balance equations in high school? They do do that? Yes, my own number. Yeah, that's how I felt coming out of high school. I was like, I didn't know. I never understood that in high school. It wasn't until college I made sense to me. 
makes a lot of sense to me now, but I did not understand it coming out of high school. Okay, so anyway, let's move on. So now we're gonna, that's kind of like the chemistry review. And now we're gonna get on to um, kind of talking more specifically about like the chemistry of ocean water, what's in the ocean water. Now, we all know there's H2O in the ocean water. I hope you know that. Okay. I don't know if I put a question that obvious on the test, but I might. So, but H2O, you know what water's made of. But anyway, we do want to talk about the salts, because, right, it's not just pure H2O, there's also all the salts. So I want to talk about all the stuff that's inside the ocean water beside the water itself, okay? So, um, first of all, you should know this, how much, how much salt is in the water. So there's a lot of different ways of expressing this. Um, one way of expressing it is that there's 35 grams for every liter of water. So if you get one liter of ocean water, there would be 35 grams in that water. Now remember that the density of water is one gram per milliliter, okay? So that means that one liter of water weighs one kg, one kilogram. So if you have one kilogram of water, you're gonna have 35 grams of salt. Another way of expressing that is 3.5%. Now you'll notice down here, you'd be like, why do you say it's 3.5%, but here it says 35%. Did anybody do the, did anybody do the refraction experiment with me? I know Eliana did it. Do you notice that little, you notice that's not a percent right there? Do y'all see that? It's a per mil, it's per thousand. So I'm just, just showing you different ways. And when we did the refractometer experiment, it was the same way. Remember, it was a per mil, it wasn't percent. So, so if you, you know, there's the refractometer, I have it right here still. But um, if you come up and do that, you'll see it, it has this per mil. So it expresses it per mil. So uh, that's 35 per thousand. Okay, that's another way of saying it, 35 per mil. Or it's the same as saying 3.5%. 3.5 over 100 is the same as 35 over 1,000. I hope that all makes sense. I know it's like a bunch of weird number tricks, but it's, it's, I'm just trying to get you used to seeing all the different ways this is expressed. It's all common, common, common ways that the salinity of water is expressed. So is it still for the uh, 19A35 grams, or is it just for grams? Okay, so it is, uh, so, so let's see. Number 19A, in grams, grams per liter, it's 35 grams per liter. In weight percent, percent is 3.5. If I said weight per mil, it would be 35. Okay, does that all make sense? Everybody got that? All right, now taking a look at this, what are some of the top salts that are dissolved in sea or top? chemical constituents dissolved in the seawater. So there's the table right there. So what do you what do you all see? Chloride, yeah, so we see chloride is actually number one, sodium's number two. So sodium chloride, you all know there's salt in the water, right? So sodium chloride is table salt. This is right, this is sodium chloride. Stuff I poured in there. Now notice it's mostly sodium chloride, right? So the by far the top constituent of the seawater is sodium chloride. By the way, what's the difference between chloride and chlorine? Chloride is a is the ion. That's what we, that's how we call the ion form. We call it chloride instead of chlorine. Okay. It's just naming a chemistry naming conventions. It's just how it is. For some reason, when sodium changes and it becomes an ion, we don't change its name, but we do with the chlorine. It's just conventions. You have to know. Well, you don't have to know it, but it's just, I guess you should know. All right, now what's the next two? What are the next two that are common? Sulfate and magnesium. So you have sodium chloride, and the next most common salt is magnesium sulfate. I'd be surprised if anybody would know this, but does anybody happen to know what magnesium sulfate is? Because you can actually go to CVS, or actually you can go to HEB, and buy magnesium sulfate. They sell it in big bags like this. Does anybody know what it is? Maybe if you've done athletics. You know. Epsom salt? Epsom salt, that's right. 
it's Epsom salt. So like people, like some people do like take an Epsom salt bath. It like helps with the muscles if you're in, doing athletics or um, it happens to be a laxative too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, but it's just a thing. So Epsom salt. So yeah, basically if you want to know what is, what is salt water salt made of, it's mostly table salt and Epsom salt. Magnesium sulfate and sodium chloride. And it kind of makes sense because there's a lot of sodium in the earth, right in the crust, and there's a lot of magnesium, and uh, it's not really that much sulfate or chlorine, but it gets concentrated in the water. All right, what are some of the other things that are somewhat common? What do I have you? I have you mentioned number, what, the top? So I have you do the top four, right? So by the way, to um, convert this, this is in grams per kg, and I ask it in percent, right? So what do you have to do to, to convert that to a percent? All you got to do is move, because it's not going to be 19% chloride. That doesn't make any sense, because seawater is only 3.5% total. So you just got to move the, the decimal point one to the left, OK? So that's 1.9% chlorine, chloride basically 1.1% sodium, 0.27% sulfate, 0.1% magnesium. Okay, the rest of this stuff is really in very low concentrations. Do you see that? This would be 0 0.04. The next one after that would be calcium, 0.04%. Very little calcium, right? Which is crazy. Think about it. Remember I brought in all the, remember we did this. Like we had all the shells, right? Well, does anybody remember what the chemical, all those shells, all the, all the oyster shells and everything else was made of? Calcium carbonate, right? Calcite, calcium carbonate. So it's kind of crazy because all the marine organisms, they're making their shells out of calcium. And calcium is only 0.4%. Pretty low concentration in the water. And they're all using that, you know, that calcium. Okay. So, and then next is potassium. This is number, um, so number 21. What are the seven most important ions dissolved in the seawater? So I... I have you give the top four and their percentage above. And then the next next one, number 21, you have to give the full of seven, okay? So what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, down to, ca down to carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is the seventh most abundant thing dissolved in the water. You got to put chloride, sodium, sulfate, magnesium, calcium, potassium, carbon dioxide. When carbon dioxide dissolves in the water, we call it, uh, it, it often forms that carbonic acid, remember? And that, that forms an acid that, that uh, can change the pH of the water. Lower, it can lower the pH of the water. There's nuances to that that we will talk about next time. Now, I want you to think about this. This is kind of crazy. What are, the, what are some of the most common elements of the continental crust we talked about? Oxygen, right? Okay, is there a lot of oxygen in the water? Yeah. Yeah, make sure you get that on the test. Be... So it's, it's made of oxygen, H2O. Okay. So, anyway. so yeah, there's a lot of oxygen in the water, okay? Um, all right, after that, what's, what's another common element in the crust? Iron. Do you see iron up here? No iron, right? Now, I remember somebody, I can't remember who, they talked, maybe, it was, who was it that talked about iron in the, in the water? In the, yeah, right? In your discussion post. Oh, I have to talk about that. I totally, by the way, the discussion post. It was accidentally due on Saturday. I'm sorry, I screwed that up. I did not want that to 
I did not want that to be due on spring break. I just didn't notice that I had set, I, you know. So anyway, I'm going to change that so that you all have, because I noticed only like 10 people did it, and I was like, oh my gosh. I'm so, if you did it on time, kudos. Maybe I should give you an extra point or something because you did it on time. But that, yeah, you went there. Yeah, I saw Amanda and Natalia did it. So it's good, so. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I total. I sorry if I gave you a freak out. I just didn't even notice. I didn't. I said it that way. So anyway, I'll give you an extra point. Those of you who did it. But uh, I'm gonna change that. Maybe make it next next time. Yeah. So that the rest of you have time because only ten only ten people did it. Um, but anyway, yeah, I saw, you know, you talked about iron and how they're going to fertilize, you know, they're thinking about, right, isn't that what you're... Chopping the uh, uh, iron, like, yeah. filaments into the water to promote plankton growth. Yeah, like, exactly. Problem. Yeah, because, you know, hey, think about this. Do you use, do you use iron? Do you, don't you all need iron in your blood, right, for hemoglobin? Okay, do fish have blood? And think, you know, think, think about how much, think about how much animals need iron and yet is there iron do you see any iron here no it is a hot it is crazy red hot item in the ocean oh it goes just like it just there we go it just goes like that it's it's red hot they all want it bad all the marine life wants it bad and that's why they were talking about putting fertilizing the oceans with iron yeah they're just yeah. there to upset the ecosystem but it would really help with the climate crisis yeah. So they, so they want to fertilize. So what Clarissa's article was about, she just did a discussion post on, be good to, good, it was actually a really good article. I'm glad you did that one. And you know, you should, if any of you want to go read it, you can go read it. Yeah. It's a good one to read because they're thinking about trying to fertilize the oceans with iron to promote plankton growth because it is a hot, hot thing in the ocean. They all want iron. And that's what's kind of like limiting growth in the oceans. So they think about doing that as a way of, getting um, more sequestering carbon in the oceans. Anyway, so it was a great, I was very happy with chips on so kudos. Um, okay, so chloride, so this is just kind of like a pie chart that shows the breakdown of the different elements of sea salt, okay? So it's mostly sodium chloride, there's sulfate, there's magnesium, there's calcium, is that calcium? Yeah, calcium, potassium, and then everything else is in that little weeny teeny, little teeny gray square. Every, every teeny weeny thing. So, okay. so, so yeah, it's a very minor constituents are there in the gray box. So everything, carbon dioxide, you know, strontium, bro boric acid, fluoride, iron, silicon. Hey, that's another thing. Silicon is very common in the crust. Where's the silicon here? Do you see? There, there's no silicon, right? So uh, I'm just trying to make you think about how crazy some of this is. You'd think there'd be a lot of silicon, right? Because there's so much crustal rocks and stuff, but there's not. All right, so where does all this salt come from? So number, number, uh, what are we on? 23. Yeah, 23. So, oh no, number 22. So where, where are those sources of salt? So there's two main sources of salt in the ocean, okay? River runoff. <clears throat> the two main sources are river runoff and then outgassing at mid-ocean ridges, okay? River runoff and outgassing. So this is showing a river, you know, coming into, just like how Oso Creek comes into Oso Bay. Right, it's one of the, where, the, where the rivers are reaching the estuary, where it's reaching the mouth of a bay or something like that, so that's, that's what. That's one source, and then the other source is mid-ocean bridges, like the black smokers. Remember we talked about that. So. Okay, so as water runs over the rock and runs through the rocks, right? Imagine all the rainwater dripping over the rocks. It dissolves the rocks a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit, and it dissolves them, and it picks up that dissolved material, and it gets carried through the streams, right, and makes its way through the through the streams and uh, gradually it reaches, you know, it reaches the ocean, okay? So that's the one major source. Now, gosh, this thing's making 
crazy. Oh. <laughs> it's it's not. <laughs> Okay, so number 24, it says, all right, so 23, where does the salt in the rivers come from? So where does it pick up that salt from? The rocks. Now, this is a thing where people get really confused about, even though intuitively it should make some sense, just from like your everyday experiences. What's saltier, river water or... River water or ocean water? What's salt? Yeah, ocean. ocean water, right? But where does the salt come from in the ocean? From the rivers. From the rivers, okay? So even though the rivers are bringing the salt in, that doesn't mean that they're saltier, right? So, And I'm sure you know that, right? You go to a river is fresh water, right? Usually it's fresh water. So typical concentration, this is the total... Uh, so this, is, this table is comparing the concentration of some different chemicals in river water compared to seawater. Okay? This is in, I'm sorry, yet another scale called PPM, which is parts per million. Okay? But it does let you compare. So typical concentration, now down here is percent, total percent. So the total percent concentration in the, in the uh, ocean, 3.5. 3.48%, about 3.5%, right? That's the salinity of the ocean. What's the salinity of the ocean, of the stream water, average stream water? Very, very low, 0.01%, right? So much lower. So what's happening is that the streams bring in the salt, the salt stays, but the water evaporates, right? So you know, you all know how when water evaporates from the ocean, it leaves the salt behind. So that's why the salt gets concentrated into the oceans. Okay. So the, obviously the stream water is fresher; it's not saltier. Even though it, it's the ultimate source of the salt, it's not saltier. Okay. So you can notice that stream water is only 0.01 percent salinity, very very fresh. Okay. Now I want you to take a look at. Um, some things are kind of interesting. There's more silicon. Yes, exactly. Do you notice that? There's actually more silicate in fresh stream water than there is in ocean water. Because of the crust or? It's, it's because the reason is, do I ask you for the reason? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The reason is, so this should really shock you right, if you think about this, because the ocean's so much saltier than stream water, you would expect everything to be more concentrated in the oceans, and yet it's and yet silicates silicates actually more. And the reason is the microorganisms. They use up that silicate very, very fast. As soon as it gets into the ocean, it's used up by it's used up by algae and microorganisms. Because remember that they use that to make their shells. Look, the same thing with bicarbonate. Look how much bicarbonate, you know, carbonate, right, is in the, is in the, um, that carbonate is really, uh, it's not more in the streams, but it's very, it's pretty close. And so, um, that's another, that's another component that's used by the microorganisms in the, in the ocean. Okay. So it gets sucked out right away, it gets used up right away. Iron, again, is not even up here. Okay, number 25, what does PPM mean? Parts per million. So it's just another way of expressing concentration. Okay. Um, I just kind of wanted to show you a little bit about this stuff, how how um, there's this process of precipitation. So remember we talked about, did I do the precipitation experiment in here? I showed you that, right? With the, I mixed the different chemical. Yeah, I did do that, because I remember spilling it all over the floor. And then remember I mixed the different chemicals and precipitates and falls out. You remember that? It makes the cloudy, remember the yellow? Maybe, yeah, I don't know. Maybe some of you weren't here. But I did do it, okay. 
So ions, um, you know that ions in water, they're going to combine and precipitate. Okay, they're going to combine and precipitate. So let's say that you had this big mixture. You had sodium and calcium and sulfate, right? You had carbonate. You have oxygen, iron. You have all these ions dissolved in the water, right? Well, what's going to happen is some of these things are going to react and they're going to precipitate out. So for example, calcium carbonate is going to react and it's going to precipitate out. And then um, iron hydroxide, it's going to react and it's going to drop out. Okay? And that's another reason that iron is so low, such a low concentration in the, in the ocean water. It reacts right away and drops out. Um, iron will combine with oxygen. It'll drop out, become iron oxide. And it drops out. It's a solid. It'll precipitate out. Right? So, so it, forms, uh, it forms a precipitate, a solid like that. Okay? So that happens a lot. Right? It's like the black smokers. Black smokers are doing that all the time. That's the smoke. It's all precipitation. Don't you see how that kind of looks like smoke that comes out of the black smokers? Right? So it's constantly precipitating solids out of that. Um, this is a solubility table. And it shows you which chemicals are soluble in water and which chemicals are not soluble. Okay? So I'll show you how, this, how you read this. Aluminum bromide. Okay, aluminum bromide. Is it... Is it a solid or is it uh, is it soluble or is it insoluble? Soluble. Right, it's soluble, right? So aluminum bromide, would, but would would dissolve in water. But what about calcium? How about calcium carbonate? Is that soluble in water? No, it has the I, so that means insoluble. So I want you to take a look at this. Most hydroxides are insoluble. Do y'all see that? Most hydroxides are insoluble. Most oxides are insoluble. Look at iron, right? A lot of iron salts are insoluble. Lots of things that have iron are insoluble. Okay, so iron doesn't dissolve easily in water. It's another reason that it's so low in concentration in the ocean water. But look at things like sodium. Is sodium very soluble in water? Do y'all see that? It's crazy. All the sodiums are dissolved in water. All the sodium salts dissolve in water. All the potassium salts dissolve in water. That's why there's a lot of potassium and sodium in the ocean. Okay. Um, a lot of the sulfates, look at that. All the sulfates dissolve in water. Right? That's why there's a lot of sulfate. Okay. What about the chlorides? See how almost all the chlorides, except for silver chloride, well, there's not much silver in the ocean. All the, all the chlorides, right? They all... They all um, they all dissolve too. So does that all make sense? Does that kind of give you some sense of why there's a lot of sodium and chloride and a lot of magnesium and sulfate and potassium in the oceans? Do you, do you all, does that make sense to everybody? It's because they because those are all soluble. They're all soluble in water. Okay. The things that are insoluble they drop out. You know they precipitate. They form a solid and they drop out of the water. So that's why they're not dissolved. In. Okay, so um, can anybody answer? What does precipitation mean? What's it mean? What's precipitation? It's, it's when a solid in water is energy, so fluid in environment. Sure, it's yeah. Saturated. Very good. So it's when a solid forms in a fluid environment. <laughs> so it's when a solid forms in a fluid environment. So, yeah, and then what does it mean if something is soluble? It can dissolve in Yeah, it can dissolve in water, right? So looking at this table, what's an example of a salt that is insoluble in water, and what's an example of one that is soluble in water? So you're looking for the I's and the S's. So what is something that is insoluble? So you kind of have to combine the left-hand side, so copper, iron, magnesium, whatever, with... The, the top, one of the columns, okay? So can anyone pick out something that is insoluble? Magnesium carbonate. Magnesium carbonate, right. So there's magnesium, there's carbonate, it's an I, and that's insoluble. Um, so how about something that's soluble? Um, potassium yeah, potassium chloride, you said? Yeah, potassium chloride would be soluble because you go potassium, you go to chloride, and you see it's soluble. Yeah. 
What's a salt that is somewhat soluble? That's the SS. Uh, calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide. Yeah, right there. Calcium hydroxide. Or calcium sulfate, or iron sulfate, or silver sulfate. Silver is kind of a weird thing to talk about. But. So looking at this thing, why is sodium chloride so concentrated in the seawater? It's because sodium, you know, sodium chloride, right, which is going to be right here, it's very, very soluble. So that's why it's so, because chlorides are very soluble, sodium is very, all sodium salts are soluble, all chloride salts are soluble except for silver chloride. And so they're both just very soluble ions. So that's why you get a lot of silver. That's why you get a lot of sodium chloride in the oceans. Okay. Oh my gosh, there's a whole other page. Oh, man, I'm not getting to that today. Okay. I'll um I'll finish that next time. We'll get to that next time. We should, we should call it a day. OK, so uh, do I have any announcements? I don't think so. I'm going to change the date to the discussion post to make it due next Saturday. So you have a chance if you need to do it. Or spring break. To do it by Saturday. Okay. And I will see you on Wednesday. We'll finish everything Wednesday. I'll have it all to cover. And then um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, the test. Don't forget, we got the test coming up on Monday week. So start studying now. Start reviewing now. And I'll have a review session before the test, just like I did last time. Okay? Yeah, you yeah, have a good day. Yes? Oh, sorry. Um, I'm crazy for a second. I never got a chance to do this. Can I still do it? Or yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, sure. Awesome. Thank you.